Caroline parties. Who wants to spin the dreidel? I do, Grandpa. Holiday celebrations. We're missing a sugar plum fairy. <laughs> Has anyone seen Amelia? School pageants. This is the best lemon bar I've ever tasted. I need this recipe. Cookie exchanges. No way! A pet hamster? He's so cute! Gift giving. Let's savor every moment of togetherness this season. Keep the holiday cheer going by keeping your COVID-19 and flu vaccines up to date. Help protect yourself and others so we can all have a healthy and happy holiday season. Learn more at michigan.gov slash COVID vaccine. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Our noses can sniff out all kinds of things. Good things and bad things. Your nose knows. If those sniffles are just a cold, allergies, or COVID-19. So if you want to be sure, swab and test your nose for answers. It's good to know. Find testing information and resources at michigan.gov slash COVID test. A message from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you very much for having me and happy holidays. It has been a very challenging few years for all of us and voters appreciate your efforts and the governors. Looking forward to another four years in office. We are very thankful to the people who participated in the political process and, and gave us this, this, this real honor and opportunity to serve one of the four years. And Governor Whitmer and I, are uh, we take that very seriously and we look forward to hitting the ground running now with uh, legislative majorities in, for the Democratic Party in the State House and the State Senate. And we're going to get a lot of good things done for the people of Michigan. Thank you. We want to touch on a few questions today. What are some of your major accomplishments in the past four years? Can you tell us briefly the uh, most important uh, major accomplishment uh, for you, Lieutenant? Many important things come to mind. I, so uh, it's hard for me to choose just, just, just a few, but <laughs> I'll share uh, about three. Uh, first thing is I'm really proud of the amount that we've been able to invest in public education. Our administration for four years in a row has invested more in public education, kindergarten to 12th grade, than in the history of the state of Michigan, four years in a row. I am a product of public schools. The governor's a product of Michigan public schools. My kids go to Detroit public schools. And to be able to have those resources available for those education professionals to prepare our young people in Michigan for success, for jobs, for higher education, that's something we are very proud of and to do so equitably. And we look to build on that foundation over the next four years. I'm also very proud of the work we have done to create jobs and opportunity in Michigan to help small businesses start and grow and to attract some of the largest businesses in the world to make key strategic historic investments in Michigan to create tens of thousands of jobs in the auto sector, but also to build semiconductors and new car batteries for electric vehicles. Uh, we are so excited to be building the future in the, here in the state of Michigan the way that we did 100 years ago when we were building the mobility economy from scratch. And so uh, we're, we're proud of what that means. And I'm also proud that we've been able to uh, expand access to child care in Michigan. This is something that's so critical for families. And I have a, a three-year-old that's in early pre-K right now. And being able to have affordable, reliable, convenient uh, access to child care is, is really critical. We've launched some important programs to make more available, to make it more affordable, and, and in many cases available for free uh, to families across the state of Michigan, which enables people to participate in the economy. Because if you're a parent and you know your kid is safe and well taken care of, you can go uh, do your job with peace of mind. Absolutely. That's all important projects. You've worked on it and achieved uh, a lot on those uh, very important projects. You mentioned creating a new job, uh, Lieutenant. Are you planning to keep the talent in Michigan, the talents in Michigan? That, that's, that's really good news for us. Absolutely. This is something that is going to be a key focus of mine and our administration, making sure that the people who we educate and train through our systems, that they see Michigan as the best place to build their future. 
and also making sure that people from around the country and around the world, they know that Michigan is the best place to come to make something happen. And so we're going to work with our our high schools or community colleges and our four-year universities to ensure that um, their students know what's possible here in the state of Michigan. We're going to build out our economies, whether that is the, the, the high-tech, high-growth economy that I come from in the early part of my career, or whether that's our arts community and, and the fact that arts are a way to really sustain the economy as well, something we're looking forward to. I had a personal experience with this. When, when I graduated from the University of Michigan in 2005, I actually left the state of Michigan to pursue my professional career as a software developer. And I was gone for nine years before I came home. And we're going to do the work to make it so that no one feels they have to make that choice. Absolutely. So is there any plan to fix the road this time? Many people, many residents still complaining about this years after years, uh, Lieutenant. You know, we have continued to be committed to making sure that our roads are safe and that we can fix them as fast as possible. And we fixed more than 16,000 lane miles of road in the last four years, more than 1,200 bridges, bridges that were unsafe, bridges that school buses or, or ambulances and fire trucks could not drive over because they were so uh, dilapidated and in such poor condition. We have fixed 1,200 of those and are going to continue to fix and see how many more we can fix next year, how many more we can fix over the next four years. We also know that we need a real solution to be able to fund and provide the resources to fix our roads in an ongoing way because they don't stay the same. We have to maintain them and rebuild them in order for them to be fixed. We also need a solution for those local roads. You know, the governor and I and our team has worked to fix as many freeways and state roads as possible. But there are other roads that need that attention. And so we're looking forward to working with this legislature to find a, a way to fix it uh, for, for real. How about like helping families during very tough time? Worldwide, we are struggling from inflation. So any plans to help families, uh, low-income families, uh, sending uh, stimulus checks? You know, we, I, I feel this personally, you know, I, I have a young family, I go to the grocery store, I see how expensive bananas are. Sure. Um, we all need more money in our pockets in this tough moment when things are so expensive. And that is why Governor Whitmer and I, we're going to work with this new Democratic legislature uh, to have as our first priority, putting money in people's pockets. And there's two policies that we want to start with that we think will make a real difference. First is repealing the retirement tax, the tax on people's pension and income that's been in existence in Michigan for the last 10 years. And it's taking money out of the people's pockets who have fixed incomes, who worked hard, who were promised to have some, an amount of money when they retired and saw the state take that away from them. And so we're going to repeal that to put more money in those people in fixed incomes pockets. The second thing, is implementing a working families tax credit. And this working families tax credit is for those uh, people who are working hard, but still need a little bit of help to make ends meet. This is gonna put hundreds of dollars back into people's pockets. And when it's gonna lift people out of poverty, more than 700,000 households, and that's gonna make a difference at this, this time of things being expensive too, to help us ride through it. Absolutely, this is a good news for, for our listeners. Thank you. So moving forward to, Numbers uh, for the COVID-19 flu, RSV, are going up in the state of Michigan. What is the plan to counter the increase? You know, we continue to pay close attention to what's happening with COVID-19 and some of the other uh, viruses, frankly, that are that are coming through our communities uh, all across the state of Michigan. And so, one, we are encouraging everyone to use the tools that we have available to us to slow the spread and, and make sure that people uh, can, even if they get COVID, to get through it. And the first thing to do is to make sure that you are fully vaccinated and fully boosted. These vaccines are very effective and they make it harder for you to get it. And if you get it, um, you're more likely to, to have only a mild case. We want everyone to take advantage of that. I am fully, fully vaccinated and, and multiple boosted. My children are fully vaccinated and boosted, all three of them. My wife is as well. This is a really important thing to do. We encourage people to know their status and they get, and they get tested. Um, and there's still COVID tests available um, in, for free in many, many places across Metro Detroit and all across the state of Michigan. We encourage people to do so. Those are the tools that are gonna help us get through this. You know, Lieutenant, there is a really shortage right now with the, with the medication. So what are the biggest challenges being experienced this year for young children and families? And how is the state addressing? You know, we are certainly 
paying close we attention. We got so many. We got so many complaints from uh, parents. They really fear for their children. There is a shortage for painkiller, for example. So we are paying close attention to what's happening um, for for young people. And again, this is personal for me. My youngest daughter is three years old, and we're worried about. Um, her and, and her friends and her classmates and her, her child care facility, you know, we are looking into everything we can do to make medicines and medication more affordable and more available in the state of Michigan. That goes up to including things like the, the work we did last year to initiate a study around whether we can produce insulin in the state of Michigan, something that has become catastrophically expensive for people who depend on it for their lives. And if we can produce it in Michigan to bring that cost down, consistent with the work that the federal government has done to make insulin more affordable, um, that's going to be a life changer. And it's going to save put money in people's pockets again, um, all across the state of Michigan. And for our parents and, and, our, and our young people, uh, we want kids to be healthy. We want kids to have access to the medicine they need, the vaccines they need. We want uh, families to be able to make the choice to keep their kids healthy and safe. Um, and we're going to continue to pull out all the all the stops to do that. So if folks have ideas, please, please send them our way um, so we can figure out and, and, and investigate them about what we should do. So you mentioned that the state doing uh, so many projects to improve child care. So some question came to our attention from listeners about programs would you implement to ensure that pregnant women and uh, mothers can stay a little bit more with their uh, newborn kids. Is, this, is there any program you can work on within this aspect, Lieutenant? Well, we think it's really important that mothers, families, mothers and fathers, or, or just whoever, families are able to spend time um, with their newborn children and that that women who are pregnant and, and carrying children are able to have access to the best medical care uh, for prenatal and postnatal treatment. And we've put forward record investments to improve access to those services. We also have put forward record investments to be able to deal with the disparities and the fact that uh, pregnant women of color are more likely to get, have serious complications or pass away from pregnancy-related conditions. And so the Healthy Moms, Healthy Babies initiative is something that we fully funded to be able to address these disparities and also working uh, in partnership with places like Henry Ford Health System to be able to, again, make sure that women are positioned to have healthy pregnancies and healthy babies. And then also you have the support um, after you've given birth to be able to to be healthy uh, postpartum. We've worked to extend access to uh, Medicaid services for those who are on Medicaid um, to not end within months of your uh, giving birth, but they have to be extended for a full year, which we think, again, will position women to be healthier and better able to take care of themselves uh, and their new babies. We also have been supportive of policies around paid family leave. So for, for women who are working to make sure that um, you know their employers can give them the paid time to build that new relationship uh, with their with their child, you know uh, that's an important value I think for mothers again and for uh, those who they're co-parenting with. Um, I, for folks may know, my my youngest daughter Ruby was born on Juneteenth in 2019, and I took parental leave um, to be with her and be with my wife to help our family move into this new phase with the new life that we brought home. I think it's important for, for fathers and mothers to be able to do that. And so these are the policies that we support. And we'll look forward to, to working with the legislature to make sure that we have these kind of family-friendly policies going forward. Absolutely. Thank you. So another another final important, maybe, I uh, think, to touch base with you today, how to keep our school safe from gun violence. This is a very important topic. It's still continuous in our community. And I just looking recently, I looked recently at the school shooting, the mass shooting. It is shocking. There were in 2022 only 275 on the ground. This is America, Lieutenant. We cannot keep our children safe going to school. That's really sad. What is the state doing to preventative measures uh, to actively uh, working to keep the, uh, our school safe. This is horrific. And, you know, in, in Michigan, when we saw what the shooting at Oxford High School oh. that, that captured the attention of the nation because of the, the, the depth of that tragedy, uh, this is a problem. The scourge of gun violence, whether it's in school buildings, on school grounds, or in our streets every day, is absolutely preventable. We can stop gun violence from being the number one cause of death for children in the United States. 
That is, that is unacceptable. And there are common sense, popular things that we can do and that have been proposed that would make a difference. You know, making sure that um, people store their firearms safely and securely in their homes, making sure that people who have been flagged as being dangerous to themselves or others can at least temporarily not have access to a firearm to go and do harm to themselves or others. These are common sense things, background checks for gun sales and gun transfers. These are the types of things that that would make a difference. Um, and also the, the governor and I have used the tools in partnership with our public safety professionals and law enforcement. You know, we launched something called Operation Safe Neighborhoods that's working to get illegal guns off of the streets, often the ones that are used in gun crimes. And we've um, you know, been able to, to reclaim almost 300 guns from people who shouldn't have them because they're on parole or probation and it is illegal for them to have them in their possession. Those are guns that could have been used in the commission of a crime that now won't be and people are safer because of this. So we're gonna continue to look for ways to keep people safe. Uh, we've provided record funding to school districts to, to create plans to, to safely ensure, to, to, to make sure they can ensure safety against gun violence and any other kind of threats to school buildings. And then the, the districts will have uh, record levels of resources to invest and implement those plans. And we're gonna continue to push forward so that that safety, the peace of mind that I certainly want when I drop my kids off for school every morning that every parent wants, you wanna know that your kid's gonna come home. And that's what we're going to build toward. How can we help as stay a community? Engaged. How we can help as a community? I mean, stay engaged. I want. I really appreciate um, the fact that the community is so powerful and is so dedicated to not only uh, the community's success but to the state's success because of the role you play in our economy, the role you play in in our culture, and we need you to continue uh, uh, to be you and be the best version of you. And as you have ideas about the future and ideas about policies that we can pursue to make life better and to make a uh, way for more prosperity, please reach out to our office, you know, uh, talk to us online, make sure that we know what's in your on your mind so we can then be responsive and deliver that for you, for you in the community. Any personal wish for New Year, uh, Lieutenant Governor? <laughs> so to share it with our listeners today. I mean, I, I look, my wishes are very simple. Uh, I, I want my, my wife to be happy and my kids to be healthy. And I want that for every every family, everyone to, to hold tight to the people they love and to be there for, for them and to be present with them. And, and if we're able to do that every single day, uh, that's going to continue to have Michigan be an amazing place. Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, thank you so much for the time. And we wish you happy holidays to you and the governor. And to your family. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, honor speaking to you today. Thank you for having me. Happy holidays. إنه موسم الأعياد ووقت خاص لاجتماع العائلة والأصدقاء لمشاركة الطعم اللذيذ والكلمة الطيبة لمنح الهدايا وإظهار الامتنان وحلول البركة في هذه الأيام استمتع بكل لحظة وحافظ على استمرار احتفالات العياد من خلال تناول أحدث لقاحات كوفيد-19 ولقاح الإنفلونزا في نفس الوقت حيث يساعد تحديث اللقاح على تقليل مخاطر الإصابة بكوفيد-19 تخفيف شدة الأعراض في حال الإصابة كما يوصي الأطباء بالحصول على لقاح الإنفلونزا في هذا الوقت من العام أيضا احمي نفسك ومن حولك في موسم الأعياد واستمتع براحة البال للعثور على مواقع تلقي اللقاح أو معرفة المزيد قم بزيارة michigan.gov slash covid vaccine رسالة من وزارة الصحة المجتمعية والخدمات الإنسانية في ميشيغان. أنف الإنسان قل ما يخطئ فهو يستطيع كشف الأمور الجيدة والسيئة لذلك يستطيع أنفك التمييز إن كان ذلك الاحتقان الذي تشعر به مجرد نزلة برد أو حساسية أو كوفيد-19 لكي تحسم الأمر خذ مسحة لأنفك وقم بإجراء الاختبار لتعرف الجواب لأنه من الجيد أن تطمئن على نفسك لمعلومات أكثر عن المسحات وكيفية الحصول عليها يرجى زيارة موقع michigan.gov slash covid test رسالة من وزارة الصحة والخدمات الإنسانية في ميشيغان.